All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, uh, without fail, in the last decade or so, every single time there's a mass shooting, we get the same response from the general establishment. Gun control and assault weapons bans. All kinds of infographics have now sprung up to explain exactly why an assault weapons ban is needed. How when the ban expired, that mass shootings spiked dramatically, blaming the expiry of the ban for the sick and unfortunately distinctly American phenomenon that we can't really figure out, mass school shootings. I'm sure you've seen this one from the Financial Times. You can barely open social media without seeing it. It's clear, right? The ban expires and then mass shootings increase. There's just a problem though. Does an assault weapons ban have anything to do with those shootings? The answer is no. That graphic includes handgun shootings, which compromise the vast majority of the so-called mass shootings. And brings us to the next question. What is a mass shooting? Nobody really knows. The definition that graphic uses and that President Obama forced upon the FBI in 2013 is this, a single attack in which three or more victims are killed. On its face, I guess that sounds reasonable. But is it though, really? Because the explosion in that number of so-called indiscriminate killings of multiple victims in a public place has nothing to do with mass shootings as we understand them in the public consciousness. In fact, mass public shootings account for only 0.5% of all gun deaths on an annual basis in the United States. So small, it does not even register on the graphic. If we are talking about mass shootings as the FBI defines it, what emerges instead is an epidemic of gang violence and domestic abuse. Those two combined make up 88% of so-called mass shootings as the FBI defines them. None of this is to whitewash the horror of Nashville, Uvalde, or any of those incidents either. It's just to say that the overwhelming societal consensus around an assault weapons ban just does not have a lot of evidence to back it up. You don't even have to take it from me. The RAND Corporation, the U.S. government-aligned think tank, last month did a systematic review of all comprehensive studies that we have out there. And guess what they found? Quote, Evidence for the effect of an assault weapons ban on mass shootings is inconclusive. Evidence that high capacity magazine bans may decrease mass shootings is limited. By the way, this even includes the rigged stats that the FBI uses, citing gang violence and domestic abuse incidents. In fact, I believe an assault weapons ban would actually lead to more horrifying inf incidents, not less. We are talking right now during the 30th anniversary of the carnage at Waco. What was the pretext for that initial raid in the first place? A bullshit gun charge against the Branch Davidian or what precipitated the horror show at Ruby Ridge, another ATF-style charge in which they were attempting to ensnare Randy Weaver with a gun charge that he beat in court after his wife was murdered by an FBI sniper. A ban is just another pretext for federal authorities to prompt raids, investigation, and stops if that's something that you care about for decreasing. But let's keep digging then. What can change? What did change? What can we do, if anything? Where should we look for solutions? One area of interest is a focus on mental health. Obviously, anyone who is trans or not who kills little children in cold blood is a sick freak with something very seriously wrong in the head. Unsurprisingly, when you filter out gang violence and domestic abuse incidents, mass shooters, as we understand it publicly, overwhelmingly have untreated or undiagnosed mental illness. This, in recent months, has become a major GOP talking point, which I actually agree with. The problem, though, on policy is they don't really agree. While rhetorically backing mental health resource expansion, we have seen the opposite occur. In fact, the very same day that many of these senators were talking about how we need to increase mental health resources, 10 Republican-led governors continue to reject federal funding to expand Medicaid, dooming smaller and rural hospitals, many of which provide mental health resources in an area with almost nothing else. You don't have to endorse Medicare for all to understand that 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 will have a major negative impact on some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in the United States. Well-adjusted people don't murder little kids in cold blood. And mental health resources themselves, though, are not the whole answer. What they prescribe may also be as important. The U.S. has undergone an explosion in psychiatric medication over the last two decades, especially in the last two years. In 2019, some 10% of teenage girls in the U.S. are talk taking antidepressants, and about 5% of boys. But since COVID, it's not just antidepressants which have skyrocketed. Adderall prescriptions have gone up by a full 30% and rising just in the last five years alone. There is real no way to know what percent of American teenagers are on both SSRIs and effectively legalized meth. But it it is safe to say it is in the tens of millions and is something that has only happened in the last 20 years. To head off the inevitable, this is not to say these drugs don't work. They certainly do for some people. But the question is, could you get the same benefit without any of the risk of bad side effects and withdrawal? 
There are reams of evidence now to suggest a range of treatment options from exercise to psychedelics may be just as, if not more so, of a better effect on lowering depression and treating these illnesses than psychiatric medication. We're not allowed to talk about this, though, because we, not, we are not allowed to talk about this now, though, because we know the so-called chemical imbalance thesis is now completely bunk. All of this is a long way of raising questions around something I believe may work. Banning assault weapons is just frankly probably not gonna do a damn thing, even if it feels good to say it. Expanding mental health resources, pushing real solutions over drugs for profit actually could make a difference, not only in stopping school shootings, but addressing the vast majority of these gun deaths, which are self-inflicted gunshot wounds by American males to the head who feel that they no, they no longer have a will to live. I mean. I just think it's important to look at the data. And you know, that's the really tragic. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.